Today I'm going to start with something that I think is a really great way to start brook trout, which has a really lovely, lovely gentle flavor, and that's a key. You need fresh and you need a kind of gentle flavor. So I'm going to get my pan heated up here while I move on. And the nice thing about brook trout actually is it's also one of those fish that are very responsibly farmed. So if you see farmed brook trout, you can go ahead and with a safe conscience get it. So this is a little bit of a mix of techniques that I have here. Classically, you know, you prepare trout almondine with a, a little bit of a dusting and you cook it. But this is my brother's recipe. My brother is a great cook. He cooks for a family, three boys just like I do, and he's always got great ideas up his sleeve. So I'm sticking with his version of this recipe. So one cup of milk, a half a cup of flour, and then we're just going to season our flour with a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, maybe a little bit shy of a quarter teaspoon. And that's going to put some punch in there because you really want to get flavor next to that fish. There's not much going on here. And I'm just going to mix this up a little bit and shake it. And perfect. Now let me show you the trout, which is so beautiful. The point really isn't that you have to cook trout for this dish. It's that you want a very gentle, sort of medium firm fleshed fish and you can do that with pretty much any fish. The same technique I'm showing you, you could do with uh, sea bass, you could do with red snapper, whatever you have in your neighborhood or in your area of the country and you figure out how to buy it. Now first of all, I can tell you right now that when you take a little whiff of this, it should smell fresh and this smells fresh. So I'm just going to cook four nice size fillets. So the first thing I do is get it into the milk. Now milk has, uh, you know, as opposed to egg when you're doing a breading technique, milk has a couple of advantages. It actually tenderizes a little bit and it just is a, I don't know, it's just a nice way to kind of freshen up your fillets. So you're not really soaking it as much as you're just making sure that you cover it. Now I use a combination of olive oil and butter here and there's a reason for that. If I put butter right in this pan, it might start to burn and I want a little bit of uh, cushion. Olive oil has a higher burning point. So if I get the olive oil in here, then I just put some butter in and see that's beautiful, just what I want. And then get the trout. Actually, you know, I'm gonna use tongs here. I think that'll make my operation just a little bit easier. And then just right into the flour on both sides. The milk actually gives it a little bit of, I don't know, just a little bit more crispiness because it brings a little moisture. I'm going to turn this way up high now before I get this in here. That's just what you want. And I'm going to leave it there for a second. Another trick, and I often say this, you want to leave something in before you move it if you want to get a little bit of golden on top of it. And I'm going flesh side down here so I can get that nicely cooked before I turn it. And I have my other pan over here heating up because the last little detail here is toasting up some almonds, just sliced almonds. And they add the nicest crunch and they have a really fantastic flavor that combines beautifully with the fish. All right, this is crowded a little bit in that pan, but no problem. Now this is my brother's touch. I'm going to show you, remember, that I smashed garlic in the beginning. He puts the garlic in the pan. He doesn't leave it there to brown. He just wants to scent the fish a little bit. And I think that's a pretty cool idea, actually. Just adds a little bit of gentle flavor. But I gotta keep my eye on it. And now about a half a cup of almonds. Actually, I'll just eyeball it. And you just wanna get them in the pan. When you toast nuts, you gotta keep your eye on it because you really don't want them to burn. And they toast fairly quickly. So I'll go back and forth and back and forth. So how long has this taken? Maybe four minutes max. All right, let's go over here and make sure I'm not burning my, oh yeah, see how quickly those, those toast up? So as long as I just get it off the heat, I'm fine. All right, I'm gonna take my spatula and take a look and see where we are here. It smells great. You can see how beautiful the milk mixed with the flour and put a really nice little crust on here. I'm gonna try a little, be a little bit more careful with my other fillets. Beautiful. That's great. All right, last but not least, come on, buddy. There we go. And then all I do is take these toasty toasts and then just sprinkle over top, mix it around in the butter, and that's it. Mm. 
The almonds smell great. This reminds me of a long time ago when I went fishing up in northern Canada and we caught and cooked the trout, although that's not something you can really do everywhere anymore. But it has that same fresh, fresh smell that captivated me in the first place. So it's finished. Under five minutes, I don't think you can beat that. So now I'm just gonna plate this up and just put it on a beautiful platter here. This one too. Okay. And this one off as well. And this. And don't forget all those beautiful leftover almonds. Just get them right on there. Mmm, yum. You could serve this with a little fresh lemon if you want to. And last but not least, a little bit of parsley goes a long way, just kind of making the platter beautiful.